to find Motari 2015 article that distinguished between reflecting on activity and reflecting on the mental experience as one attempts to find meaning and perspective while working on the practical activity. Moving forward, I want to confront my deep-seated thoughts. I will try to reflect on my process as to make meaning of self and the world around me as I engage with the course readings. The purpose of this reflection is to uncover the underlying assumptions that contribute to my knowledge and shape my worldview of education. My name is Brihania White and this is my reflection on learning for Module 2. For Module 2, we covered 1. Research on effective practice in teaching and 2. Digital technologies to support reflection. My first view was, will I identify myself or lived experiences in these studies? Until recently, I did not consider reflection from a theoretical perspective or research area. Now that I am becoming more familiar with various reflective approaches, I hope to formulate a reflective strategy to enhance my pedagogy, more so pinpoint digital technologies that support the process. Looking for me. In this reflection, I will focus on the course reading, teachers' critical reflective practice in the context of 21st century learning by Leon Benade, 2015. Of all the readings of this module, I believe it is pertinent to my situational context and reflective development. This project used multiple New Zealand case studies to interview teachers and school leaders on reflective practice for a digital future. I immediately connected with Benade's article because I envisaged myself as a teacher participant in the study. According to the article, the concepts of 21st century education encompass the impact of globalization in today's world, the influence of digital technology on every aspect of society, developing 21st century skills, namely learning skills, literacy skills, and life skills for employability, promoting lifelong learning among learners. I believe that the skills highlighted are crucial for sustainability and survival in today's rapidly changing economies. Therefore, as an education, educator, my pedagogical approaches, values, and beliefs are always under critical review to adequately prepare my students for 21st century living and life. Benet 2015 referred to definitions from various reflective theorists to develop his study demonstrating there is no clear or superior definition or model for reflective practice. Now looking back, I gravitated to Sean's model only. Unlike other models, its temporal nature ignited my interest, in particular, to reflect during practice. However, after further readings and discussions with my colleagues, it was clear that other reflective aspects and approaches should be considered, for example, one's feelings and collaboration with peers. In his study, Benet 2015 developed six principles of reflective practice. Let's examine each principle and the digital tools that can support it. One, reflective practice should be individually sustaining. Written reflections are evidence of an individual sustaining practice. For me, purposeful writing can be more reliable than random thoughts. I can examine one's tacit knowledge and gaps in that knowledge. At times, I may revisit my reflection to gain insights, revise, or question initial thoughts. The drawback of written reflection is that it may take much effort. Some may argue the need for professionals to reflect based on theoretical perspectives. At my school, teachers are not required to write reflections. However, I take it upon myself to reflect, to reflect when possible. My reflections are usually mainly mental notes and jottings in the weekly record and evaluation report, a shared online document. Even as I write this reflection, I feel the need to improve on my reflective habits. Presentation should be collaborative. In my experience, collaboration can lead to critical review and improved solutions. Discussion at departmental meetings using online conference tools, online meeting notes, 
conversations with like-minded colleagues using instant messaging apps and phone calls. I have learned to be open to constructive feedback and be willing to reevaluate initial thoughts and self. Three, reflective practice should be temporal. Reflection as an ongoing activity. Before the lesson, lesson planning using word processor shared documents. During the lesson, delivery and formative assessments like using note-taking apps. After the lesson, examine lesson outcomes using word processors and shared documents. Four, reflective practice should be intellectually unsettling. Reflection brings about a shift in thinking. Five, reflective practice should consider ethical thinking in action. Until now, I did not consider ethics in reflective practice. I assumed that teachers would inherently exercise moral judgment. However, Fryer highlighted that to avoid ethical fallouts, what I see as a teacher must align with my actions. Ethically speaking, reflection should work in the best interest of students. Reflective practice should lead to changed practice. Reflective teachers will commit to change in pedagogical practices as need be. For example, moving from the traditional face-to-face -face class to hybrid or online learning during the COVID pandemic. In my current reflective practice, I still adopt the principles of Shun's model mainly. In particular, knowing in action, reflection in action, reflection on action. Quite recently, I included reflection for action and critical reflection. Reflection for action, that is, preparing for the event much like a teacher planning her lesson. And critical reflection, that is, collaboration and feedback from others, self, students, peers, and established literature, thereby filling the missing components in the original Sean's model. From the module two readings, I am convinced of the need for written or recorded reflections and making it a habit. So too, when we reflect or we encourage our students to reflect, it is an ethical decision as we work in the best interests of our students. Colleagues, at the end of module two, some of my next steps include, one, practice reflection on my mental experience as well as the practical activities. To work on improving my reflective writing. Three, explore digital tools that support reflective practice. And four, join or start a learning community on reflective professional development. Thank you for listening and I welcome your feedback.